All right, so hopefully you will be able to hear me and everything will come across clearly. You were asking if I could see a recording of pending stops in case the price closes and starts moving direction and then waiting for retest. So, so here's one that I actually just recently got in. And so if I look, this is a NZD USD. I recently got in this one only because price had closed above this yellow line, which comes way back here. It tested once there and starts way back here. So there we go. So we have one, two, and this would have been the third respect if it decided to respect it, but it didn't. It broke through. So I came in with a little bit steeper green line and I had, I mean, I missed the original break, which would have been, um, let's see if I can point this out, which would have been this right here that would have been the original break right there and I would have gotten in now from what Butch has talked about is if you get a breakout like that maybe instead of immediately getting in putting a pending stop a, a, yeah like a pending buy stop just a little bit above where that candles at just in case it decides to take off if it's really gonna like just rock it you'll be in the trade if it doesn't trigger it and pulls back for a retest, well, then you would close that pending stop and you'd actually get in on the lower retest level. So you'd actually get a better price. In theory, it all depends on what price is actually doing. So like me, I had missed this trade and I got back to the markets, was finally able to look at it and go, okay, you know what? If I was in this trade, this would have been my original entry right there, right after that candle closed. I, my stops would be roughly in about the same area. I Generally, I want to give a lot of room, breathing room, for two things. Number one, I'm going to mark a, an alert more than, I mean, it's pretty much going to be right underneath my safety line to begin with. But this allows me to be able to look in context and go at least one-to-one. -one. If I was able to at least get one-to-one, -one, do I have room to get to one-to-one? -one? If I have room to get one-to-one, -one, then that's good because I won't take a trade unless I can make that room. If there's no room for movement, I'm not gonna take the trade. And so that's probably the only like caveat to taking every trade that breaks is if, if it looks like I'm going to meet some resistance. So like the next trend line's way up there. That's a trend line from, I don't know what time frame it is, but that's a trend line that, uh, that you are more than likely to see some sort of reaction from. Now, whether or not it's a complete reversal or or it just breaks through you generally see some sort of reaction for those higher time frame um trend lines generally um, in the same vein this was a higher time frame trend line in theory and we almost got no re reaction and it pretty much just broke through it now could it turn around and flip absolutely don't really care uh, all, all I really care about is sticking to my process of getting into trades, letting them work out for whatever they're going to work out for and managing the ones that don't. And so I would have been in this trade already. So I got a better price point and now I'm in it. So I, that pretty much runs it down. I have not found a good process to number one, set myself up to come back and look for breaks and retests. Um, I'm very much a set my alert and forget it sort of person. Um, somebody else pointed out that I have a lot of pairs that I'm looking at, and that might be part of it. I might be looking at so many different things that it's hard for me to remember to go back and look at particular pairs. Um, but this has worked for me. So I'm not saying that this is the right way to go. It's also, at least by my experience, not the wrong way to go because I've consistently been able to pull out profits and it works just fine um, so hopefully this lines up with the question that you were asking and if it doesn't by all means ask more questions and if I can if I can explain it I will if I need to get on and show a video I absolutely can um, I hundred believe a hundred percent believe though because I still haven't seen you post anything I think less conceptual ideas in your head and more actually doing it a lot of your questions 
may be answered through experience and actually doing it, messing up from time to time and doing something wrong or getting into a trade that you look in hindsight is like, oh, I shouldn't have been in that trade based upon it. You know, like all that is going to teach you far better than you looking at um, our stuff uh, idea and throwing out ideas without actually implementing any of it. So I would highly encourage you. I don't care. It doesn't matter what instruments you're, you're planning on trading. Just grab one, start marking it up and, and annotating. I, although you did say that you start off on the four hour and you wait. So you actually, you, it does sound like you are doing stuff. Um, I just haven't seen anything and maybe I've missed it. Maybe I just haven't been paying attention. Uh, I, don't, I don't know. Maybe it's Maybelline either way. Uh, I yeah show some of your stuff your process sounds valid starting off on the four hour hits the trend line price action you're waiting for support and resistance go down to the one hour go down to the 15 minutes like all of that if that's your process go for it like that is it's beautiful as long as you can consistently do it you're bound to learn something from it that'll help you in the future and so just make sure you're staying consistent like you told me that's your process but I've come time and time again to particular traders that tell me their process and then come to find out through their journaling or through future conversations, they don't actually stick to that process. So make sure you're sticking to that process. If that's truly what it is, stick to it. Do it consistently, repeatedly, because that will remove part of the what ifs or the unknowns out of it. If you're consistently doing the same thing, you can then start seeing the key elements that make things work or work or generally work over time versus the ones that don't. And then you can start trimming out and adding to and things of that nature. But if you are flip floppy on your process, I, there's, it's going to be really, really hard to find consistent profits if you're not being consistent. So sorry for that rant. Um, but like I said, if you have any questions, by all means, reach out.